Hey guys, it's Jeff, and today at WWDC, we saw the release of iOS 13. And for developers today, iOS 13 is available, that is beta one. If you guys want to know how to install iOS 13, uh, there's a link down below to my video on how to do that. But if you guys already have iOS 13, or maybe you're just thinking about getting it, or maybe you're just interested, in this video, we are showing you all of the new features and changes that you can find within iOS 13. Now we are specifically going to be featuring those on the iPhone 10. S Max here. Obviously, the iPad is not getting iOS 13 as it has iPad OS. We'll have a first look for you uh, on iPad OS as well today on the channel. But let's go ahead and get iOS 13 loaded up onto our uh, iDevice here, our iPhone 10s Max, and take a look at what's new. Okay, guys. So we have iOS 13 on the right here and iOS 12.4 on the left. This is not a speed and comparison test. This is simply just showing you all the new features and kind of comparing what we had before. So on the home screen, nothing has really changed if we go and uh, try to move apps. Um, you know, it all pretty much remains the same, but it takes just a little bit longer to uh, go ahead and get it into this phase where it's moving. So <clears throat> as you can see here, that process was just slightly different. So if we go into the control center here, um, we don't have anything visually that's changed very much, but the features have definitely changed here. So um, if I go and go try and change the uh, screen brightness. You can see here, I actually do have an extra setting and that is the appearance of light. So I can go ahead and uh, change the appearance to dark and that will actually change my entire UI experience to a dark theme, unlike what you can do in iOS 12. So if we go back to this menu, I'll just show you that once more, we can just switch from light theme to dark theme straight from the control center here. Now, the next change that I noticed was found in the um, volume control. So here you can see that we have two very different volume control UIs. On the right here on iOS 13, it shows uh, what device we're actually changing uh, the volume on. So I'll show you over here if we go to our HomePod and then we try and change the volume. Um, that's how it looked in iOS 12.4. But if we do it on iOS 13, um, we have a little bit different of a layout here with um, the, the music um, kind of um, applet here on the right hand side. Um, so it kind of separates the speakers and TV versus uh, my actual device and probably AirPods or HomePods. Um, AirPods or um, like Beats devices if they, those were um, uh, connected. So we'll go ahead, uh, we switch to HomePod and there you can see that our HomePod now has an icon above the um, volume control here so we can go ahead and see exactly what we're co controlling the volume of. So that's really cool. I really like that feature. And then also we have a couple of different animations here. We have a check mark um, that's a little bit different. It looks just a little bit more clean and um, some different animations when that goes, goes ahead and switches. Now, if we go um, and switch to like a HomePod device, um, everything pretty much remains the same here, so not too much to talk about there. Um, but this is the main change that I did see within the control center. So one thing that I noticed is when we go to the camera app, we actually have a lot more options here on the left with iOS 12.4. So I'm not sure what Apple is doing here, um, but uh, obviously they didn't feel that you needed a scan QR code or um, a take portrait option there. Now let's back out of this menu and go into uh, the App Store. So the App Store has significantly changed um, from iOS 12.4. You can see that on the bottom row here, we have um, a lot of options today, games, apps, updates, and search. Uh, for iOS 13, we have today, games, apps, arcade, and search. So you might be asking, how do I get um, access to updates? Like how, how can I get the update for YouTube Studio? You just swap, pull down and go ahead and update. Well, you actually have to go up here to your profile and then all the updates will be shown here down below. So you just pull down on this entire menu here and your updates will come in um, as, as needed. So this is a very different field, very different look to the App Store. Um, the UI experience really isn't that different, um, but I think the, the kind of placement of all your controls and everything definitely has changed. Now, Apple Arcade is definitely new for um, iOS and iPadOS and I believe tvOS as well. And as you can see, it's coming soon. So we'll have to, just have to wait and see as far as um, you know how uh, the Apple Arcade works and how all of that looks. But uh, we'll give you a first preview when that actually happens. Now, one thing that I did notice is 
that um, the, the animations when closing an app are a little bit different. iOS 13 seems just slightly smoother, but that's just my personal opinion. Now going into the settings app, we have a lot of changes here. So as you can see on the left is iOS 12.4, of course, and on the right, um, we have iOS 13. And in iOS 13, we actually have the ability to um, tap the, uh, the icon for a uh, microphone. So we can go ahead and speak in our search rather than having to type it. Now, if we go down here um, to airplane mode, you can see that our controls are actually a little bit different. Here on the right-hand side, our controls are um, you know, just slightly different from what we were seeing in iOS 12 there. We have a darker UI for the switch there. So that looks really cool. And then we'll go ahead and go down to um, the third menu here, which actually displays some new options. So here in the third menu, we can actually see that we have an accessibility menu on iOS 13. So this is really cool. Instead of going to general and then accessibility like you would on um, iOS 12.4, you now have a separate menu for accessibility. So if we go into the accessibility menu, you can see we have voiceover, zoom, magnifier, all that jazz, and then the list goes on. So there, this list is quite extensive and I definitely think that if you need any accessibility options, you should go, you should go ahead and uh, check it out. We also have uh, customization over our uh, side button here. I know we had a little bit of customization before, um, but everything looks very cool here. So uh, definitely check this out. I do, uh, I do think that this is a very welcome change within iOS 13, and I think a lot of people will definitely appreciate that. Now, without further ado, I'm going to go uh, show you guys the wallpapers because I know you guys are absolutely ecstatic about the wallpapers uh, for iOS 13. Uh, so we have an extra option here uh, in, the, in the menu. We have a dark appearance dims wallpaper option. So um, that will, you know, darken or dim the wallpaper when the dark theme is turned on. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the new wallpapers. And as you can see, we have uh, four new wallpapers and uh, that is it. So four new wallpapers and they are actually all dynamic wallpapers. So what I can do is um, I can go ahead and um, choose the wallpaper that I have now and it will actually change with the, uh, the dark theme. So as you can see, we have a dark theme wallpaper here now. It's not just switching um, the theme for the UI, it's switching the, the actual wallpaper like we've been seeing on Mac OS. So that is really, really cool. And I think you guys will definitely enjoy these wallpapers. I have to say that this is my most favorite one for iOS 13. Now, now that we got uh, wallpapers out of the way, let's go into general and then onto the about screen because we have a few changes here. So obviously uh, we have iOS 13 loaded up on the right here. Build number for that is 17A5492T. And if we go down to um, the only change that I saw was in the modem firmware. So um, it's a pretty significant change on the left here with iOS 12.4, 1.06.02. Right here with iOS 13, 1.50.23. So a pretty significant upgrade here in uh, modem firmware, and uh, definitely a welcome change for any of you guys who have been experiencing poor um, cell quality with LTE and all of that. Now, one change that I did notice, which was really cool, is screen time looks slightly different here. I actually like the much cleaner look here uh, on screen time with iOS 13. You can see that this uh, kind of spinny dial up here on the right-hand corner has shifted down here to the left. And if we go to um, the bottom here, the bottom menu, you can see that we actually have communication limits. So um, a lot of kids were going ahead and basically, um, you know, continued their texting through the control center and everything like that um, after their screen time was over. And Apple noticed that this is not um, this is not good. So they added a communication menu here where parents can actually control um, exactly what their kids are doing, even down to the communication limits. So. Um, um, I can go ahead and um, you know limit it to specific contacts, or I can go ahead and um, during during allowed screen time limit it as well. So um, that's very interesting. Uh, definitely a welcome change for all um, parents out there who want to take a little bit more control over their kids' um, app usage and phone usage overall. So that's really cool. And um, yeah, we have a slightly different look to um, some of the 
um, menu options here. So it looks like we have um, some different layouts here of screen time, but it's not you know a major change. Um, all devices is at the top here, and then we have um, all devices like see all activity will be um, kind of that new option there. Now, this definitely has changed. So if we go to all devices on both of um, the devices here, you can see that we have a much more dynamic UI here on the right-hand side where we switch from, uh, switch from week to day. So um, on the left here, we have today and last seven days. And here it actually starts out with the week automatically, and then we can switch it to day. day. So um, that looks really cool. I really like the look and feel of um, this menu option here. And uh, for all you parents, you will definitely enjoy that menu. Now, if we go down here to the uh, battery menu, you can see that we have a slightly different icon um, for the battery menu in iOS 13. Um, unfortunately though, nothing really has changed with this menu. We, we don't have any more options to see any more data. It's really just all the same, but we do have that same UI look change that we saw in screen time. So this looks absolutely amazing. I absolutely love it. It looks it looks great. So let me know your opinion on this new look and how you like it. Um, I personally love it. Now, if we go to um, the battery health, you can actually have a new setting now. So optimize battery charging. To reduce battery aging, iPhone learns from your daily charging routine so it can wait to finish charging past 80% until you need to use it. So that's really cool. I'll definitely be testing this out. As you can see, I already have 100% battery health, but I can only imagine um, that that actually helps your battery health in the long run. So that's a new option there within the battery menu. So down here in the reminders app, we have a new icon here for the reminders app, and then we have a new layout in the settings app for the reminders app. We'll be taking a look at that in just a little while. But let's move on to some other changes here. Um, as you can see on the left here, we don't have a health app, um, but here we have health uh, in the settings app and we can kind of uh, control all the settings um, for the health app there. Now, as you can see, the, the kind of layout of all the apps here is just a little bit different. We have the addition of the shortcuts app as well, um, but stocks, um, news, Safari, Measure, Compass, and uh, all those apps have clearly been kind of just rearranged here um, for the addition of um, some, some further settings and uh, customization there. So uh, yeah, we have some uh, different settings there and let's go ahead and um, check out some more changes that were made uh, within the settings app. So in the control center, everything pretty much looks um, about the same but we actually have um, some more controls within iOS 13, and uh, that would be under the Feedback Assistant. So you can actually add this to um, your, your customization options. So if you, the Feedback Assistant is uh, specifically for um, people who are on betas, so you can actually add add this to um, you know your control center if you're on the beta, and you can go ahead and um, give Apple feedback on what's going on uh, within iOS uh, 13 betas or um, iPad OS betas, uh, you know, whatever it may be. So that's a new addition to the control center. Now the display and brightness menu definitely has uh, kind of had an overhaul, obviously because we have dark mode. So we can switch directly from this menu to dark mode. And I don't believe I've showed you this, but dark mode looks absolutely insane in the settings app. This looks awesome. Let me know your thoughts on dark mode in the comment section down below. I absolutely love it. But yeah, going back to the display and brightness menu, uh, you can see here that we can switch. And then we have an automatic switching, which is definitely something on my wish list that I had. Um, we can go ahead and customize the schedule or we can do sunset to sunrise. So I'm going to leave it as that because I think that is really cool. I have that set up on my, um, on my Mac and I absolutely love that feature. Now, if we go down, um, things have uh, just changed just slightly, just the UI looks a little bit different, um, but not too much of a difference here um, when comparing everything. Now, if we go to uh, the standard and zoom menus, you can see here that we have a lot different of a UI experience. Um, we're getting a full preview of the experience between standard and zoomed here on the right with iOS 13. That looks amazing. So I really like that. And Apple has definitely spent some time kind of making sure that all of this looks really, really cool. Um, for one, I am really excited to see iOS 13. I think Apple has made significant improvements here. 
Now in the Wi-Fi menu, we actually have um, a little bit different of a layout here. We have asked to join networks. Um, that was kind of a an option here, but it was only on or off. But here we can actually have it notify us if um, you know the phone is asking to join a network. Now uh, auto join hotspot is definitely a new one. I'm going to leave this as asked to join because I don't want to always connect to a hotspot, but it is nice to have that feature. It is definitely a welcome one. Now, one thing, one major thing in regards to um, the, the Wi-Fi and communications and everything like that, and I actually missed this previously, um, if we go into the Wi-Fi menu here, you can see that um, if I you know do a long press on that Wi-Fi, can't really do anything. But here in iOS 13, this is definitely a feature I wanted to see. We have a menu within the control center here. So that is really, really cool. Uh, this is definitely something I've been asking for and a lot of people have been asking for and having these controls within the control center makes things a whole lot easier. So definitely take a look at um, these controls. I think this is an amazing change uh, within um, iOS 13. So yeah, go check it out. Um, those are some of the additions um, to the kind of communications and um, you know, all the toggles that are in the control center. Now in the phone app, we have a different layout here. Um, obviously on the, on the left here, we have groups and that is not there. Um, the kind of UI just looks slightly different here, um, but not too much of a change. We obviously have this icon where we can speak in our search, um, but again, not, not too much of a difference within iOS 13. Everything looks pretty much, uh, you know, the same, except our call icon here is different. It's a little bit thicker on the right here within iOS 13. And if we go into um, the, the voicemail here, actually visual voicemail is currently unavailable. So unfortunately we don't have visual voicemail just yet, but I'm sure that will be coming in a later update uh, within the betas. Now let's check out something really, really cool within um, iOS 13 here. So I can actually go and swipe to text um, within uh, the keyboard here. So um, I'm gonna say save me a seat. So that's really cool. I have the swipe to text option and obviously that's not available within iOS 12 here. Now, if we go into the, um, the alternate keyboards, um, we see here that we have a new um, kind of setup here. So I can actually create Memoji stickers, which is really awesome. So if I go into that menu here, we don't have that. We can only use emoji when texting, but here I can actually use emoji stickers and it takes my uh, Memoji and creates stickers with my Memoji. So I have a whole lot of options here. That is really, really cool. And it just kind of takes um, kind of pre-made stickers that they have and puts your Animoji or Memoji onto that. You can also select from Memoji as well. So I'm going to um, swipe down here and go um, and check out the um, Memoji feature. So if we go check out Memoji, we have um, a lot of changes to Memoji. If we go and edit, we have a ton of new options here. So hairstyles, um, there's new hairstyles. I'm not going to go through all of these, um, but there's definitely more customization within hairstyles and you can go and customize color and everything like that. Um, there's more skin tones. I noticed they're, they're a little bit more accurate and you can also do like some blush and everything like that. So, uh, you know, to make your cheeks like a little bit more colorful and all that jazz. But yeah, go check it out. There's a lot more options within Memoji. Um, during the keynote, they previewed like, you can add teeth gaps, um, some uh, piercings, and all of that jazz. So really cool. I think a lot of people will be spending time within Memoji. Obviously with iOS 12.4, you do not have any of that. It's pretty, um, pretty basic, but um, definitely was really good within iOS 12.4. But here we have the options for earrings and then uh, more, more options for facial hair. And then uh, what I was really interested in is uh, there's way more options for eyewear. So that's really cool. So go ahead, check it out. Um, there's a lot more options for Memoji. And then there's also a lot more options when it comes to um, the Animoji. So we have an addition of the mouse here, we have the squid, and then we have the cow. 
So that's really cool. They're adding more and more animals here within iOS 13, and I do expect to see just like three more before we get to the final release of iOS 13 here. Now, one other change that we saw was in the Maps app, and this is a pretty significant one. As you can see, everything looks very different here within the Maps app, and there's a lot going on with the Maps app from now into the future. So by the end of the year, we will get a much more detailed map. If I uh, kind of scroll out here, um, versus you know what we're seeing within um, iOS 13 here, uh, the the detail, the level of detail is a lot greater within iOS 13. If we scroll into major cities like um, let's say Los Angeles, you can see here that we have a lot, a lot of detail. And if we go into the information page here, um, everything looks slightly different. Um, we have different options with map translate and satellite. Um, but those are all pretty standard and what we what we were seeing before, but we can actually go and um, Go ahead and tap on any place that we want to go and uh, This provides just a little bit more information as to um, the amenities and everything like that So um, the maps app is definitely continuously improving and I can't wait to see what happens with the Maps app. There was also a new feature of the binoculars, which would show just under um, this, this icon here. And that would give you kind of like a Google Maps preview of um, you know going through the street um, because obviously Apple has sent their car out so it gets um, you know on the ground maps. Now, one thing that um, I was definitely excited to see was the addition of the Reminders app. Um, so Reminders has definitely changed. And um, I, am, I am, for one, very happy to see that change. So if we go into the Reminders app, uh, you can see here about your devices to access your upgraded iCloud Reminders on the following devices. They need to be upgraded to the latest OS. So um, I have all these devices that need to be upgraded and um, I did upgrade them, so I'm not sure why that's showing there. Um, but as you can see here, it looks very, very different. So if we go uh, to the um, kind of like add list, I, I can go ahead and add a list to local or iCloud, but then we also have different, um, we have today here in, in iOS 12, but we have scheduled, flagged, all and today here in iOS 13. And they've done a major improvement on the Reminders app. Obviously on the left here, it looks pretty archaic, but on the right here with iOS 13, it looks absolutely amazing. So definitely hats off to Apple for creating um, such a good Reminders app within iOS 13. Now, one thing that I was very excited to see is Find My. Um, so Find My has been uh, kind of a combination of Find My iPhone with Find My Friends. Um, so that's really cool. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go ched and check it out. So I can go ahead and share my location with anyone. I'm not really going to go ahead and do that. Um, there's, not, there's not anyone that I, that I know that's on iOS 13 that can actually um, access this quite yet. Um, but we have a lot of options here, a lot of different options um, with sharing my location with friends. Obviously here we have the Animoji um, option where you can uh, select your friends from their Animoji characters. That's really cool. Um, but we also have the addition of um, basically allowing us to see all our devices in a much different view. So um, as I said before, like uh, earlier this year, my iPhone XS Max was stolen. I did a whole video on that. Um, but now we actually have a little bit different of a system here. So if I go to my MacBook Pro, um, I have a different option here to go ahead and um, uh, see what's going on with that MacBook Pro. Um, if I mark it as lost, it will actually use other Apple devices to go ahead and um, to go ahead and uh, locate itself. So even if it's shut, I can go ahead and track it because it sends out a special Bluetooth signal. So um, a lot of improvements within the Find My um, app over Find My iPhone and Find My Friends. I'm really excited to see that. Now let's go over to the widgets um, because we do have a couple of changes here. So um, over here on the left, we have show more, show less. Um, looks okay, decent. But here on the right, we have a much different looking UI experience. It's a lot smoother. The translucency really mixes in well with the background there. And then um, if we go down to batteries here, we have a little bit different of a look. And then with screen time, we should have a very different look. I'm gonna go and add it right now. And um, we also have the reminders there as well. Um, but if we go to screen time, 
uh, the screen time looks a little bit different. So um, five hours, 28, um, 28 minutes above average is what it says on the left here. We don't have any sort of indication as far as what's going on here on the right hand side. So that's weird. Maybe some further, um, you know, further options to see that information in the future. Maybe it's just because it's just updated. Um, but yeah, it looks much better. Um, I do like the look of the, of the uh, uh, widget page here on the iPhone. And I think, uh, I think Apple's done a great job overall with the UI experience on iOS 13 here. So when you go ahead and create a new message within the mail app, this is what it looks like. Obviously, a much more bold design here with the uh, iPhone XS Max running iOS 13. And then we can go ahead and um, this arrow will basically show um, the icon of whoever we're sending our mail to. So um, not too much like functionality change here, um, but definitely some more options. Now, if you swipe to the, to the right there on the top uh, bar here, you have more options, kind of the same options as you had before, but um, just slightly different. Um, we have the option to um, format and change our text a lot more dynamically than you know what we have here because we can't even do it. Um, but this is really cool. So I can actually format my emails like I would on a desktop. That is absolutely amazing. Um, and then if we go to the right here, I can add photos. I can take a picture directly. Um, I can go ahead and uh, copy any device from the files app. And then I can go ahead and mark up um, anything, kind of draw anything that I want to here. Um, I have different tools down here, which look vastly different than what we have on um, iOS, uh, iOS 12. And then on the far right here, I can go ahead and scan a document and then go ahead and send it in an email. So the email app has definitely gotten a lot more useful for me. And it actually, um, that those are all the changes I need personally within the mail app. I think it looks absolutely amazing. So if we go into the shortcuts up here, we can see that um, things have definitely changed. We have a lot thicker of um, the, the buttons here that go up and down. Um, they're not as wide on uh, iOS 13, but they definitely look different. Um, I like the look, the colors are less bold, which I don't like, um, but um, I'll just have to get used to it. But we do have a new menu here in the center and that is called automation. Um, so I can automate all of these um, based on location. So everything's location-based now um, as far as automation goes and Apple has definitely added this to the shortcuts app. Now, if we go into gallery here, we obviously have um, some automations that kind of work with um, you know, obviously that, that uh, location-based automation. So um, we have suggested automations for um, going home and everything like that. And then it also gathers shortcuts from my apps. So that is really, really cool. So shortcuts from my apps, it can go ahead and suggest those and I can actually add those as Siri shortcuts. So that is really cool. Um, just because the, the most common uh, kind of things that I do within uh, my iPhone, I can actually set them up as shortcuts now and do them automatically. So um, that's really cool. Now, one change that I did notice that uh, kind of all of you have been looking forward to is this. So we have the ability to, to kind of change the, the volume, but right now it's not working. Of course, this is a beta. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, kind of turn the ringer switch off, and then that will give a, um, a notification at the top there. So if I go ahead and change the ringer, that changes and we have a, a new icon or a new UI there at the top. I'm assuming with the volume um, kind of rockers, um, this will change to change the volume, but as of now, it only changes the ringer and that's when you activate that. If I go ahead and uh, turn it off, um, we have a silent mode is turned on their notification. Now, if I go into sounds and haptics, uh, change with buttons, that should be changing it, but this seems to be just an issue within iOS 13. It's a beta, so I'm not expecting too much, but um, the volume icon definitely has changed. It's not in the middle now, so that is definitely a welcome change. Now, another thing that I did want to share with you guys, um, yes, that's my dog, um, is this, this new UI for the Photos app. So we have a new bar here at the bottom where you can select from years, month, days, and all photos. So that's really cool. Definitely some improvement coming within the Photos app. But if I actually go and edit the photo of my dog here, um, I have some different editing options. So um, everything here looks very different. I have the option to auto edit. Um, I can go ahead and change the exposure. Exposure, that looks very different um, from what we had before. I can change the brilliance 
and then I can um, just change a whole lot of settings here that you couldn't change uh, within iOS 12, and all of this looks really, really good. I'm not gonna say that you couldn't change it within iOS 12, it was just a different feel to it, um, but there is definitely a lot more options here within iOS 13, so that's really cool, and you guys should definitely look at it. It gives you the option to edit your photo photos even further, and if you have a video, it allows you to rotate video and everything like that directly from the Photos app. Now, if we go into the Music app here, uh, we can see that the UI has definitely changed. I do love iOS 13, like the look of it. Um, we don't have any arrows at the top like we have in iOS 12. We just have a flat bar. If we move down, um, the, the album cover is a little bit rounded on the edges here, a little bit more rounded and more in the center. So that's really cool. And then the entire kind of um, layout of the information is just a lot different. So I have the uh, the title and the artist located on the left side here, and then the option to kind of um, you know move it around, put um, kind of view the album, the entire album, copy, um, all of that. So that's really cool. And I can actually um, I have a lot more options here. So that's really cool. I really like the look and feel of uh, the new music app. And then we also have live lyrics um, with with the new music app. So it will give it to you live. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any lyrics for this song, but I think that's an absolute welcome um, kind of feature for iOS 13, more specifically in the music app. Now the UI has definitely changed here for um, the, the HomePod and switching over to um, different devices, but it's pretty similar to what we had in um, iOS 12 and similar to what we have in the control center with iOS 13. Um, now we have uh, the ability to kind of um, align songs here, um, you know, on the right hand side. So I can go ahead and um, kind of place these in different areas um, where I want them. And these are the play next songs. I also have the ability to repeat songs. These icons look a little bit different and of course shuffle them as well. So um, that's really cool. But yeah, definitely a different look and feel to the music app. I really, really like it, but that's just a quick look at the music app. I'm not going to go too in depth with that. Okay guys, so those were a ton of new features that we found within iOS 13. Obviously there's more, there's a ton more of new features and we'll be getting to those later today or tomorrow. This is just kind of a first look at what the new features are within iOS 13. If you like this video, give it a like. If you want to stay up to date with all of our content and kind of see all of the development with iOS 13 as it progresses throughout the developer betas, make sure to get subscribed and also hit the bell button to get updates as soon as that content is released. Thank you all for watching. Watching this video and hopefully we'll be seeing you in some upcoming content. Peace.